know they look another man, yeah, yeah. I know go throw a stone, then I hide my hands, yeah, 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 yeah. My life, he be moving me, I be bad man, yeah, yeah. I be ghetto boy, me, I be bad man, yeah. Well, no joy, get so let me fight, bamo. I try to see you sing, yeah, me ni waba, yeah, yeah, yeah If I tell you my story, you're my brother, you go cry, oh, yeah I'ma bring that shit I want to, yeah. oh, until you bless me Today be today, me too, I deserve your bless Hi, welcome to the J Store on the Joy News channel on Morty TV. We are on DSTV channel 421 Go TV 144. My name is Miss G. It's another exciting evening where we bring you what is happening in town when it comes to entertainment. And we are the Ghana Events Awards 2019. It's the launch and the nominees announcement here at the Silver Star Tower. We get to see who will be nominated for what? 17 categories uh, to go. Come the 30th of August, we get them to pick their awards. Who wins what? who has been nominated and who are you looking forward to pick an award come the 30th of August. We bring you all that here at the Silver Star Tower. We speak to all the artists who are here. The industry persons will be present and those who might be nominated here at the Silver Star Tower. So stay tuned as we bring you all that is going to happen this evening at the Silver Star Tower. It is the Ghana Events Awards 2019. Everywhere I go to, I met you a couple of days ago at the event. Mm -hmm. where, where, where's your wife? Yeah, that's the yeah. first question. You see, <laughs> and you see, get that? Yes, where's your husband? But oh. he's not my husband, people. He's my TV boo. She, yeah, you see. She has, she has some other things, hey. yeah, other problems. It looks like you are jealous. <laughs> he's jealous. He he's is jealous. He's every jealous. time, all the time. Oh. King doesn't allow me to pick calls. He doesn't allow me to text anybody. Oh. <laughs> No, that's she, a joke. That's a joke. She, she doesn't allow me to leave the office. Hey, Charlie, they are confessing on TV. <laughs> but tell me, tell me, 
Now, you guys hosted the 2019 edition of the launch of the Ghana Events Awards. Share your experience with me. How does this feel like for you? Really, really amazing stuff. I mean, Jackie gave me, gave me the call about three days ago. He said we are doing this. So we just prepared for it. Thankfully, Jackie and I work together every day. So there's always chemistry. For the, for the late calls that are coming, we are, we are always able to come here and, and do stuff. We're happy about what we did tonight. It was quite interesting. And uh, we, we are happy for this award scheme as well. A lot of events happen in Ghana, year in, year out. So it's good so much recognizing other people who are doing great stuff. Yeah. Yes, it is only prudent that we award these people. It's not easy to put an event together. And so if they've been able to do it, then of course they need to be awarded. And so we applaud the event organizers. This is a great initiative and it needs to be applauded. We should all support it as Ghanaians. I mean, once it's Ghanaian, we should be in it. I know she's on TV, and she's in you know, her, her, her she's still the law, man. But also, was it planned that you guys will be in black? No, no, it wasn't. No. You know, you know, every time you yeah. see us on TV, we never and, and, and people anything. think that we plan our we outfits, never plan we never plan it. It just happens. Telepathy. It always happens. So it means that everywhere you go, you must take him along. <laughs> And everywhere he goes, well, very, very soon I'll well, change his name to Bliss is everywhere or the, King yeah, is everywhere. The place you know? I go are too dangerous for Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> he just confessed there. Eh? Yeah, too, de too risky. <laughs> but let's talk about the industry in general. You know, a lot of things are happening. Like you said, a lot of events happening and all that. Our industry is seem, seems to be getting a lot of attraction, a lot of interest, even from businesses and all that. I don't know if you're excited or you're worried that we might not present ourselves so well to maintain the relationship that people might want to have with us as an industry. I think, I think first of all, I think we should try and position ourselves in a way that um, since we're getting that attraction, we're getting eyeballs, we need to position ourselves in a way that the corporate world, the corporate Ghana will be interested in whatever it is we're doing. Because then if, you know, the attention is there and they come in and they're not seeing exactly what they need to see, then that's a problem. So I think we as, you know, industry players, we have a key role to play. And so it, I mean, it's not just on one person, it's on everybody. We need to hold our hands together, let's position ourselves in a very good way so that, you know, we'll get that eyeballs even more. I, I, I'm not excited. I, I think it's, it's, it's way overdue. You know, I've, I've worked in other countries and, and, and other entertainment industries. And the gap between corporate Ghana and Ghana's entertainment industry is really wide apart. It's really wide. I mean, how, how often do we see Sarkodie with a CEO of a, a top 100 company? How often do we see Stonewall with it? So we, we're looking for these relationships where Whiskey and Elumelo are having a drink together. We're looking for these relationships where Davido and, uh, you know, the owner of UBA are sitting together. This is what we need. We need investor confidence. They need to come in and support this industry. America was built on entertainment and sports. Entertainment and sports. It's a big industry. It needs to be supported. A lot of people are talented here in Ghana, and you know. You, you, you've been here for a long time. But you think that we've carried... People say, look, they don't even carry themselves well. When they're given the opportunity, they mess it up. And so we don't want to, you know, have, in quotes, vagabonds in our business. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, we need to yeah, we, you need to position. present properly. Yes, you need to present very properly. Important. Yeah. It's very important. I, I, I think then, that at this point, the, the, the young cats, the young musicians and entertainment people are, are beginning to gather knowledge on how to present themselves and how to brand themselves. And that has always been key to your success. Yeah. So now that they are learning, there are platforms where you can learn now and they are watching our counterparts from Nigeria and South Africa and they are seeing how Caspar Nuves moves and they are seeing how Whiskey moves and they are started speaking to themselves and say, hey, listen, I need to do better. I think some of them are doing really well with their brands and so we should just keep on supporting them. The younger ones will learn from the ones who have done great. Sakode has done a great job, Stoneboy has, Shatawale has in his own way also. So the younger ones will watch them and they'll learn and, and, and they'll, be, they'll become better entertainment people. Yeah. I mean, if other countries are doing it, why can't we do it? We can do it. It is easier for us to do it. We just need to put our minds to it. We need to work together as a team, you know, as one entertainment industry and let's push it forward. Because if I do my own small little thing and you do your own small little thing, King does it. I mean, it's all divided. Let's put it together. Let's, let's push other. one agenda. And I think that's the way forward for Ghana. Thank you very much, King and Jackie. Thank you having a conversation with us thank you very much congratulations three music has been nominated for the event of the year thank you very much i mean it's quite destructive isn't it mm -hmm. <laughs>
two years and you're already getting that attention, you're getting people to talk about your brand? Well, I mean, it, 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 it puts a lot of pressure on us now. Obviously, I think that within the last two years, we've done so well creating the property, uh, three music awards. Now the expectation is higher. And so that, that informs the reason why for the past few weeks, which is about, what, eight months or nine months before the next event, we're having sleepless nights trying to curate and hone next year's events. You know, so, I mean, and, and these accolades goes to, I mean, give us a necessary encouragement to still keep keeping on, still keep pushing, still keep going up and above for ourselves to ensure that we that we manage the expectations of the people or we meet their expectations. And so this is encouraging. Mm. It's encouraging. And, and what, what do you make of the initiative to award or reward event organizers? I've heard people in the past say that no, there are lots of events, we don't even know which one is rich. What do you make of this thing? Well, I think it's good. Um, at least one, it helps to create a, a database of events that happens within the period. And most importantly, beyond the struggles, you know how within the last few years, it's been quite hectic being an event organizer in this part. You know, it's a different thing altogether if you're in the corporate space where you do a lot of corporate events. Even that comes to its own challenges. But it's been quite difficult doing events in this town, given the low patronage for the corporate space and all of that. And so I think that this is in order, at least if for nothing at all, this is this gives gives event organizers encouragement to keep keeping on. So I think it's a good initiative. It's a good initiative. And uh, let's talk about the state of our industry at this moment, where a lot of you have advocated for corporate bodies to look at us, blah, 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 blah. People keep asking the question, have we shown enough readiness to get them to show interest in what we do, that they don't think that they are wasting their money if they should invest in showbiz and entertainment? I think, we, I, I think we have. I think we have. I mean, if you look at some of the things that some of us have been able to do within the last few years, or what we've been doing all together in the industry, I think that we have. But I, I also think that the market is shifting a bit. I mean, there's been some changes. You will see it. You will see it on the surface, but below. And when you engage with these brands and understand them more, you realize that a lot of things is changing in terms of the how brands communicate and how brands leverage events. I mean, to reach out to the audience. I think that what's left to us to do is to properly understand the insights, understand the shifts, understand what's changing, and begin to apply as a way of, I mean, getting a lot more patronage from the corporate space. Because, of course, they've got objectives to meet. They've got, um, what's it called? They've got numbers to achieve, and targets to achieve. I mean, and we also are creating vehicles that will help them achieve these targets. You understand? But we need to get to a point where we understand them, we understand where they are going, they also understand us very well, so we can have that proper brand fit. You know, I think that given the new shift, that's something that most of us are, are, are yet to get to. But I think that, I mean, given all the things that we're doing, we're still, we're still doing well. We're doing well to attract them. We've, we've gone, I mean, for some of us have actually even invested to create the brands as a way of, I mean, serving that notice that, we can do it. I mean, we're able to do it. And beyond even the public events that we do, we are already engaged in creating um, corporate events for these clients anyway. So, I mean, we know them, they understand us. What we are here to do is, in terms of our public events, understanding the shifts, understanding the current insights, and applying them where necessary to ensure that it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Now, quickly, let's talk about Theme Music Awards. Now, we've done um, half year, we're in the seventh month, and very soon it will be 2020, and there'll be another event. Yes. What have you already set up picturing? What have you already today putting together for 2020? Well, we started working towards 2020, in fact. Um, right after the event, uh, we, 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 we put together a report on the event. Don't forget, there are a lot of partners involved in this. There's a multimedia angle, there's a DSTV angle. And then there's a, there's a whole board, there's a committee. We put together the report. We shared it with some of the um, stakeholders that's involved. We started discussing it and started to look at ways and means to factor in the feedback, the criticisms that we got. It's very important. Within the last few months, you know, events like ours had come under a lot of uh, focus and spotlights regarding um, trans uh, transparency, credibility, and all of this. This has become 
but a very, very important thing for us to actually consider. So I know that engagements have started to really take this feedback and, and, and then see how we can actually turn it around. So internally, there are a number of things and innovations that we're working at. And I'm sure that when we break the comms in terms of it, I mean, it, it will be worth the effort. Again, between now, we've already started the necessary engagement in terms of the marketing sponsors. Like I said to you, we, we, we've understood, we're understanding the shifts, we're understanding the insights. We're engaging the brands, we're engaging the corporate organizations to fully understand them, understand where they are going and see where we can find the connect, you know, so that because it's very, very important, giving expectations that on us, you know, it's expensive to be able to push through some of the innovations we're pushing through. You, you need some innovations that's tech driven, you need some innovations that is resource or human uh, um, driven as well. And so all these things come at a cost and definitely, I mean, when we find that fit, when we find that connection with this brand, it will go the long way. So there's a number of things that's happening, a number of things that has already started in terms of the whole event. But what will be of utmost importance is how we win the trust of the public and the industry, the talent and everybody. It's very, very important. It's not as if we've not worked all the years to do it, but together with ourselves, VGMA, we saw what happened in the VGMA, which is a really, really, uh, which is a learning curve for all of us. We, we're learning from it. Even uh, from ours as well, there were a lot of feedback. So we're engaging, we're looking through to see what will be reasonably uh, uh, um, best in this case to apply to ensure that at least, of course, it's awards. A lot of, it's not everybody that will be happy with results of it because of the competitive nature of it. But we're certain that by the time we come out with some of these innovations and ideas, it would be relatively, it will be reasonable for everybody. So channel manager for Joy Prime, Nanaya uh, Sapong is here and uh, she's been speaking, she presented uh, uh, the nomination for the uh, events event um, companies of the year. Okay, and then she made mention that the multimedia group is partner. So we want to understand when you say we are partner, how are we partnering this? Okay, so um, in terms of um, giving the Ghana Event Awards the platform to announce the event and tell people about it and all of that, um, that's what we're doing. And um, we believe that next year um, is going to be bigger, including this year. We expect it to be a very fruitful event. The launch went on successfully and uh, we can only hope for the best. Mm. It looks like these days every event organizer is interested in a partnership with the multimedia group, Joy Prime to be precise, and everybody wants to have you know their stuff on Joy Prime. What do you think is the magic you're doing there? Well, multimedia group um, is always the icing for people, and um, it attracts like um, the bees are attracted to honey. I mean, what we do there is um, quite important, relevant and um, on the map, put people's events on the map, aside our own. And so when people see us do it good and good and good, they come to us. And um, yeah, so we are a strong force to reckon with when it comes to um, events and entertainment, um, yourself um, included. And um, it's an amazing team we have. And so it's really, really, really not too surprising. We can only attract the best and keep pushing forward. Now, finally, let's talk about the initiative to award or reward event organizers and events and musicians who grace events and all that. Um, it's one of a kind, a lot of people will say. Yeah, very much so. Um, I think, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of a kind in this country. There's so many events, relevant ones, irrelevant ones, and all of that. And I hope that the organizers are looking out for um, what's relevant you know, and then uh, making sure that that becomes the pinnacle that all other events look up to, that if we want to really be on the bill of this um, Ghana Event Awards, then this is what we need to do. But then if we open the floodgates, then there's not going to be any standard. So I believe and I hope that the organizers and the board of this event um, are going to do what's necessary to maintain the credibility. Yes. Miss Debbie, the ever loud Miss Debbie. You're so loud, why? I think I'm controversial and then I'm allergic to certain things that happens in the industry so I'm outspoken so immediately anything happens I get to talk about it no matter what it is. Mm. 
so that is why you get yourself into a lot of the issues that are happening these days. I've been seeing you calling out people on social media and all that. Okay, you see, we have gotten to the point where we have um, tolerated certain people for so long. For the fact that we don't talk doesn't mean we don't know how to talk. And then this is turning into bullying on social media. So they are bullying people, calling out names, insulting people. So I was like, okay. If you want to do this with me, why don't you just come clean and then let's do it all out and then like check us running like hello. And, and there are people also who said, look, you know, you've differentiated yourself. There are people who look up to you, blah, blah, blah. And they are not excited when you also call out people despite the fact that they have you know, they initiated the fight or something. Yeah, I have a lot of youth who follow me because I'm more of a social advocate. I go out there to talk to youth. So with what I do, I know definitely there are certain people who would look up to me. But if I don't stand up for certain people and myself, things are going to go wrong. I understand the fact that's why I actually stopped because I was getting too much negativity. When you come to my page and you read the captions at Miss Debbie, you notice that most of the things I talk about about are inspiring, are like motivational. I, I, I always talk about things to make your spirit go high. For a second, it's not as if I drifted. I just wanted someone to understand the fact that, listen, Ghana doesn't belong to you. We all pay our taxes, we all work. So just take a chill pill, yeah. Anyway, so I'm sure that is over now. Um, it's over until probably I hear anything, anybody says anything. It is not over for me because we need to have people who can stand up for their rights. Some people are so timid, they go like, oh, I want to go back. And immediately you start drawing back, people think, oh, Osro, you're afraid and all of that. But it's not like I'm afraid. So anybody who hits at me definitely is going to get a nail on the head. Trust me on that, yeah. And then you start out for people as well. I remember that at the Goldie Movie Awards last year, um, you made a whole lot of noise is when Moesha was called out by, I think was it a while, somebody called it out and all that. Do you, who said it was unwarranted as well? No, you know, at that particular point, we were selling Ghana out on stages. This is a program that was aired on DSTV. And then this guy kept saying Ghanaian women in Ghana, Ghanaian women. And I wanted people to understand that, listen, you can't just call on Ghanaian women. You, for instance, I've known you for years. You are so hardworking. There are lots of women out there who work so hard. So if Ghanaian women are working hard, and then someone said an interview, like on an interview that, oh, I do this. For the fact that she said it doesn't mean someone should just come and then rob all the Peters in Ghana. No, so I had to stand up for it because I work hard, I sell clothing, I'm a public speaker, I do a lot of things and sometimes I don't even get paid. But it's for the love, so if we are doing this this way, I expect Ghanaians to like roll into the line and understand the fact that I am standing up for Ghanaian women because that particular day AY was like, Moisha Badong, Ghanaian women, on DSTV. Let's be real people. That's not how I want people to know Ghanaian women. Ghanaian women are hardworking, we are supportive and listen, we're trying to lift the flag of Ghana so high. So wherever you meet a Ghanaian woman, respect her. Now you do some sex education also on social media. I wonder what brought about that? Okay, so I was doing a program on one of your sister stations for like um, uh, a year and a half and then in Ghana we don't teach our children about sex which is a no-no situation. Sex is actually supposed to be one of the most important subjects in school. But because we don't treat it, we have lots of teenage pregnancies, abortions and other stuff. So I took it to myself and I was like, okay, why don't you do this? And it's, I was so surprised. People send their problems to me, people talk about it. People call me at night. There was a girl I had to go and meet at Legon Hospital because she felt like killing herself because she was pregnant. We had to go through a whole ordeal about it. So. I think um, with your platform, I would appreciate it if I can also get the opportunity to go on other places to talk about sex to the youth. Thank you. <laughs> like, are you like a sex therapist? Do you have education in sex or are you using some experience to talk about these things? Thank you. So with mine, it's basically experience. And if I'm being sincere, experience is the best teacher. You know, I am 30. I'm in my mid-30s. And I have gone through so much with and without the help of people. So when I see the younger ones coming up, I'm like, okay, why don't I just do something? And the best way we can help the youth who are actually our future leaders is to educate them about everything, everything, including sex, yes. Is it, is it like you had your first child 
when you're a teenager or because I know you have a daughter who is quite old. My, my daughter is just 12. I didn't have her when I was a teenager. I was in my teens, like my 20s, but I wasn't like, it wasn't teenage pregnancy. But the reason I want to educate people is I talk to my daughter about sex and sometimes she goes like, ew. And I'm like, honey. And then I, I tell her, listen, this is the vagina. This is a penis. You would see your menses. And then these are things I tell her. So God forbid, if I shouldn't be around when she sees her menses, Miracle knows how to take care of herself today. So sometimes it's best we, the parents, prepare, teach, even at home, tell the children because they are girls, they are boys, these things happen and we do not educate them. So let's start talking about it and let's make sure the children are comfortable with anything that has to do with our private parts. Then you can go on and on. Stop telling your children this is the breast, it's called crazy. No, tell them this is your breast. A guy is going to touch it. You might get pregnant. You can use contraceptives. You can use condoms. Let's, let's teach them. I just feel like I have so many youth around me and they like my energy so I get to educate them more. So that's why I took it to my platform to tell people, listen, sex education is important. Instead of people looking for $200 million to be doing what they are not supposed to do, invest, let's say, $2 million into education, sex education. And then trust me, you have less street children, less abortion, less teenage pregnancy, and you have more like youth to look up to. All right, so uh, Kevin is uh, the man or the brain behind the Ghana Events Awards. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure today you are fulfilled that the 2019 edition has finally been launched. Yes, I mean, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, you have been supporting me from day one. So thank you for uh, tonight as well. And then this year, my third year, it has not been easy, you know. So um, we just pray to God that you should just also give us strength and then give, also give you the love for me, for also always supporting me as well. How many categories do we have this year? 17 categories this year. So um, last year was 15, and then this year we've added the youth event of the year and then if, um, the best event entertainer to it. I mean, events, we have artists, comedians, I mean, poetry, and then all that attached to performances. So you need to be, you need to add it to uh, an event because they, they also make events very um, amazing and successful as well, apart from the whole organization. Tell me what it took you, uh, the process you had to go through to put together these 17 categories. I know you have board members who are industry people and all that. Yes, we have board members, we have the academy, we have the, um, the bloggers. Uh, let me say people online as well who also because they they also cover the event a lot so we also got their thoughts and then all that we also have the board members who brought everything together not not me i'm not part of the board so it's the board who brought all these um 17 categories uh, together we also have i mean um the the main entertainers the all the event organizers as well also came on on the board and then we also I came together for us to put all these um, nominees and also the categories together as well. So. Now, so do you know when the main event is going to take place? Have you planned that already? Yes, Are you yes everything, has, everything has been planned. Um, the main event is happening on the 30th of August at the terrace of uh, Silver Star Towers. That, I would say the rooftop of Silver Star Towers because this year we have a whole lot of activities that is going to happen. Um, Amazing, amazing stuff. Fireworks and all that. You can do fireworks in the room and all that. It's amazing stuff that is going to happen. So, I mean, multimedia is on the bill. So, you know, we are playing together. So, they know they know what is going to happen. So, I don't want to say a lot, but a, lot, a whole lot is going to happen on the same day. So, we are looking forward to the 30th of August, you yes, say. Yes. And um, do you have all the ITs that you're expecting build up yes. already? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, surprisingly, I don't know whether I should mention their names, but they are all top. The okay, top maybe artists. you should just tell us since we are media partners. I mean, I mean, I have Kevin Boy. Um, we have Kami Eugene. That we are also putting on. Low. We are also talking to Lady Prempe. I mean, as well. I mean, we have Prior on the bill as well. So, and the more to come. I mean, um, it's going to be amazing. Like, you know, we have live band also on the bill as well. We have a live band section because looking at these artists, live band is also. And then we are, we are also expecting some dignities that that enjoy live band as well because it's not just awards it's also at night for us to enjoy ourselves because people have been going to events uh, so this is their night so we need to also let them have let them feel home and then be happy because this time around they're also being seated and they'll be watching stuff because all the time they are running around so 
Yeah. yeah. It's great Thank to see you this evening. It's great to see you too. You look fantastic. Just like you do. I, I always, I, like, I just want to walk in your footsteps like that. Hey, look at you. Look at you. Who is like, always smashing? I want to be like you oh, when okay. I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this man interested in you or something? The way he's coming, he's snapping videos you, or whatever. He's for me. Don't mind him. <laughs> Don't mind him. Okay. So let's talk about the events. Uh, you've witnessed the launch of this event. I have. How excited are you about this year? Well, this year I know it's going to be great. Now I've known Kelvin from back in the day, and then he spoke about the magazine, and then the magazine came to being, then the event came to being. So I've been attending all the events, and I know this year is going to be fantastic. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be greater. I mean. I'm dreaming of it already. Mm, you're dreaming of it already. And uh, there are lots of, this is 17 categories we have so far. Is there any category that you're more particular about? Um, I think I'll say the event MC. Mm. Yes. Um, last year, it was somebody who was the one who won, not too known. Um, everybody was like, who's that person? Well, the person shocked everyone. And so I'm, I'm, I just want to see who's going to win this year as well. Mm. Yeah. Uncle Fred, like a lot of people call him, Fredima missed a lot of time to show up for things like this. I wonder how he even does it, even at his age. He supports a lot of events in Ghana. Yes, that's my passion. You know, we need to help one another. That's my passion. Mm. The school that I attended, Premier College, he said, so we are always there to help others. That's my passion. That's my we're glad to have someone like you interested in things that are done by younger ones than you are and supporting them and all that. Yes, there's a history behind this uh, Ghana Events Award. Mm -hmm. I had just gone for a program at Peace FM premises where Kelvin saw me and he told me, Daddy, I want to do something and I would like your support. I said, go ahead. He told me that you want to do Ghana Events Award. I said, hey, my brother, I'm there to support you. So I've been part of the board since its initiation. That was the last three years. and. This is how far we've come. Mm. So I'm also here today to also support. And I think I gave the opening speech as well. I think we missed out on that one, but being member, a member of the board from the inception and having come this far, I'm sure that you have a lot to say about how Ghanaians are receiving this award scheme and all that. Yes, Mama G, uh, the problem that we have in this country is about sponsorship. I mean, people don't buy into your ideas readily unless they see something. And then something also comes from money. The young guys of today or the young entrepreneurs, they don't have money. And we are pleading with organizations and corporate bodies to give that kind of support. Because if you look at the idea behind the conception of this, what do we call it, this Ghana Events Award, it was so good that I had to also come in. We they need support from the organizations to put in their money so that they can also you know, go a notch higher in terms of what they want to achieve. Because if you look where we started, we started from African region in um, hotel, the very small room where we were discussing things about how things were going to happen. If you go into our archives and see the previous setting, you can see that things have gone a bit higher in terms of our achievement. We haven't reached there yet, but at least what we have now, we, we are a bit okay. We, 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 we were expecting more people to you know, get involved in, in, the, in, the, in the operations of Ghana Events Award. They need support. Thank you very much, and I hope that the support will come through for them. Thank you. Uncle yes, Fred. please, Ghanaians, support us. Support the young ones. They are very brainy. They have ideas. We need to support them. That how the other economies support it, the Mark Zuckerberg is in all those uh, Bill Gates. We also have them here. So let's support our own. All right, so uh, George Britton is also here. Uh, he's manager of Ketcher. They've been training recently, <laughs> and they've been in the news. I don't know if it's a PR gimmick or anything uh, close to that, but uh, there's been a lot of conversation around your artists in this few days. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, that's what the people want. Uh, they want to, of course, talk more. Uh, so as an artist, we realize that these days it's not, always, it's not just about music, but as well as you know, I mean, it's a great event. And this happened to one of the events that has been created between two artists, I mean, two camps, of course. Uh, uh, Public Ojo and Ketcher, it's not, it's not intentional. I think they have some rift ongoing, but we are trying to keep, we are trying to bring peace between them. You know, we represent peace in the industry. But I think Public Ojo is taking this whole thing to a different level. Uh, yes, Ketcher Joshua was mad from the beginning, but uh, Papi, you know, from the things that we're hearing outside, I mean, we're not happy with Papi Kucho, and we don't want to predict you know, something negative, we understand, but it's really provoking the camp, and it just have to be. What has he really said that is getting you people angry? Uh, 
I think most of the things are uh, in the uh, DMs between himself and Ketcher and uh, you know for an artist to ignore artists for a very long time you know that we kind of respect that uh, we think each of them is supposed to share or deem they're not Papi is not showing it and I think it's not just with Ketcher it is a lifestyle of his that uh, I have witnessed most people or most artists in the western region uh, complain so this is not something that we are uh, we, we as Ketcher and of course I equally represent the lot of artists, we're not happy about so we just want him to change and be a brother, you know. Uh, especially this, <clears throat> uh, where he finds himself now, where his career is now, I think he needs the support of others to somehow uh, hop up again. Uh, what is, you're trying to say that, okay, his career has gone down, is that what you're saying? I wouldn't say his career has gone down. What I would say is, you know, it, it sees now, and where he finds himself now, of course, it's not among the, among the, the hottest or the top most artists in Ghana now, but um, he's not there, like, he's not where he used to be. Uh, of course, he's, he's gone down, not in the drain, but he's gone down a little bit in the pecking order, uh, but... <clears throat> He can still come up. We want that, okay? Mm. But it looks like he wants to rather beef us, you know, find a way to uh, cause an unnecessary fight or rift between the two camps. Which, you know, we came out and I mean, if you if you follow Ketcher's tweet over the days, uh, you realize that, you know, he was laughing, he was making fun, but Papi took it to a different level. And of course, there are things that it's in the DMs that we can't bring it out, but it's quite sad that, I mean, this is coming from Papi Kocha. I'm pretty, pretty mad at him. Mm. But if you talk about how you know he needs to you know get into the vibe so that you know he gets his like his song says balance gets his balance again, mm -hmm. people will say you are teasing Papi on the same level at this point in time. No, no, I'm, I'm not teasing Papi. What like what what I'm trying to do is you know Papi comes from second year track already just as catcher and we feel uh, we need to work together. And get to the top of our games, you know. When when Takwan is buzzing, when Kinata or Ayusum or any of these guys are buzzing, it's good for us from Takwan. But Papi is the kind of guy that when he hit him up, he ignores you, and that hurts, you know, because we feel uh, this is the right time for us to sell. So ourselves. then it means that he's he's right to have said that, you know, Joshua might be angry because for about. Years, I, did, I don't know if the number of years, I can't remember how many years he told me, but for he says, years, for, sure. is it, I think he said five years that five years, he's okay. been trying to, I don't know, I can't mm -hmm. remember vividly how many years, but for a very long time he's been trying to get his attention, and because he didn't give him that attention, that is what has escalated into this. I think I now understand why he's doing that, because I just noticed that he's been texting me since 2015, and I've never responded, so that's why I think he's upset. Yeah. Oh, you think he's really truly upset? Yeah, yeah. Because I just noticed that I went to, because I was going to text him like, yo, what's going on? And I found out that like, he has been texting me like 10 messages, reaching out, you know? So maybe that's why he's upset. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just something you guys were doing for fun. No, no. no. So have you taken it personal? Because some of me. the things that he said to you. Oh, he has you taken know, it personal. There are insults in that face yeah. to face and all that. Yeah. You, you're not bothered? Oh, no. Nah. Not at all. Is it, it because it's Ketchik? Yeah. Oh, if it was somebody else, you would have responded. If somebody else, I would take him serious more. Oh. But I catch it, yeah, you know. Oh, Charlie. You are the boy. Oh, my, it's fact. <laughs> it's fact. The guy went to the studio, got air time, yeah. uh, got studio time, yeah. did a diss song for you yeah. face to face. Yeah. And you decide, like, people say you are running away from him. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I think so. I am, yeah, because what is that going to do for me, going after Keche? It won't do me anything. It won't give me anything. Who, who would add value to you? Me personally, I don't like beef going against someone, but I would go against someone... It has to be someone that I, that um, someone that I really admire. You know, I really, I, I mean, I admire Ketcha. Don't even get me wrong. But when it comes to like lyrics, someone who, to me, you know, can really rap and I can really go back and forth with a person talking about lyrics. It's not even the insult, like lyrics, how the words are put together and the schemes and everything. I, I love rap, you know, but it won't be Ketcha. Yeah, of course, he ignored it for quite a number of years. And when this uh, strong man medical thing came up, he, he made very offensive to it, which I can't really take lightly. So uh, initially we were not too upset. Uh, Joshua took it on, he wanted to, you know, play along, but it's like Papi isn't seeing how we want to see this picture. So the, our camp, we are not too cool with him now, but we're just trying to find a way to keep things going. But then also, you, you started the major thing by going to the studio to do face-to-face, -face, which had a lot of insults in there. Yeah, I mean, face-to-face -face was basically, uh, I mean, 
Joshua, you know Joshua is a very comic guy, he's a very funny guy, hilarious type. So he wanted to do something funny. And unfortunately, yes, I know there were insults there. Honestly, I didn't even listen to some before it came out. You know, I, he said it was going to surprise all of us. And, uh, for us, because we knew Joshua was going to rap, it was going to be rather wickeder or badder than this, you understand? But uh, it came out and there were some things he said in there, which I think they were too personal. Uh, uh, because he did mention something and he said, he, he, he mentioned ladies' name to confirm, you know, which we thought, no, man, there are things that you, you can't say it on a record. But he said it, and I think Papi didn't take it lightly. You know, there were some words exchanged in the DM. Yeah. So I told Papi, yeah, they wouldn't reply there if you want, if you are provoked. Put on a tape, okay, and I don't know why you, you still... don't think that he deserves an apology because he said he's not going to give you people the attention. Apology? That... Mm. No. But you just said that your artists use words that you didn't think were good enough. For me, <laughs> good enough for me. But you think but... That it's good enough for the artists? Well, I feel, I feel from him to the artist, he thinks he's right, so he still keeps his words. I mean, maintains, I mean, no, he's not, uh, he's not sorry for anything he said. Mm. And now Papi keeps jabbing you guys from interview to interview that he gets. Do uh, you think that it's going to get any, any cleaner? Because it's looking messy already. You know, we just want to help Papi to get back to, to, to okay, balance his career. Uh, if you listen to the last one that you, Green, the last one that he released, I think it was a bit dirty for me because looks like Papi has lost it. The Papi that was doing hip hop, it's not doing more of smoking music, and he, I think he appreciates the smoke. I know Papi is now is a full-time smoker. Uh, before he used to smoke cigarettes, but now he's moved to the other one. And which other one? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to everybody watching us. So uh, what people want them to legalize, you know? And I think he's, he's so deep into it now, which is affecting his career. Now listen to the song. You ask yourself, did he really go to the studio to record this song to get shows to play in this country? No. So I think he's, take, he's not taking the music serious. I don't know whether because you broke up with Sister, De Sister Debbie or whatever it is, but... Uh, you went out with Sister Debbie. <laughs> One of those things, I mean, it happened uh, in, the, in the initial stages of his career, uh, but it didn't last because people had to come in. Why is Papi beefing? You know, they said Triangle. No, I can't mention the other one's name. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Tell me. <laughs> Why, is Why is he beefing? Why is it not cool with Medica? I mean, when he came, when Medica came, it wasn't cool with Papi Kojo. Now, all these things were happening. These things were part of what made those things happen. But hey, I mean, of course, everybody has a right to date whoever he or she wants. So we are cool with it, but we want him to be serious with his music so we can all dance to his music. But that's not your, that's not supposed to be your business. If somebody no. decides not to be serious with your music, how does that even matter to you? He doesn't bring his bowl to you in the morning and say, hey, George Britton, <laughs> Kejai, give me food. How does he matter to you? Anyway? But you see what he's been writing. I mean, if, of course, he started, <laughs> he, he started writing, Kejai will start doing the diabetes rap and I'll going to get raps and all that, which was a bit offensive to uh, Kejai Joshua, you yeah. understand? And of course, but, but, Andrew... I'll look into your songs. How do you find it as perfect? No, it is. But he said the way and the way and manner he, he, he quoted his comments were a bit uh, uh, a bit funny, a bit uh, a bit provocative. Uh, so we felt, you know, we spoke to him behind the scenes to uh, kill the car, but it looks like he enjoyed it. So yeah, this is it. But from your explanation, you could also say it's, somebody might begin to think that maybe you yourself are not even proud of the Alugutugi song. You no, did. we are proud of it. I mean, of course. No, you see, Alugutugi was an Afrobeat song. It didn't do a hip-hop song. So for you to tell a, uh, a fellow artist that the only rap it knows is Alugutugi, uh, where the opposes are your What didn't know is that way another. But we felt, you know, he knows more than that. So, okay, so don't just put him in that box. But, but you just said that when he had the opportunity to show how much he knew with the face-to-face, -face, he failed as well. Did he fail? Those were insults. Did, was that the best no, he could do? No, but you see, big songs, big songs has no, big songs has no, um, no form. Uh, has no, no, no. <laughs> big, big songs has no, uh, what should I say? Doesn't have because a pattern. Because I heard you say that mm -hmm. oh, you you didn't listen to this. boy had you expected he that he do he that or you expected him to have done better. I said that? Yes, you said that a few minutes ago. Okay, maybe. maybe. So I'm a hip-hop guy. I, I like a lot of hip-hop. But when I heard a song, of course, there were some things that I wanted to hear in the songs. If you are dissing Papi Kujo, because there are a lot of things that even me who is a rapper, if I'm to diss Papi Kujo, my first two lines will kill him.
Okay, hey, but we can give you the opportunity to do that. I'll come to the studio and do that in the studio. I mean, there are quite a number. I think I see some of his fans here. Oh, my probably not like the idea. I'll come to the studio and do They've that. They've been speaking about him all this while. They've not attacked you. They've not even actually. Uh, no, him. but Since I mean, you say no, because they do. know. No, because you know, I'm being very factual. But because I'm not hitting him on bus, they are not attacking. Him. But he, I'll bring he that. Says you guys are riding on him to get the bus no. to get the attention. No, no, no. That even. There was a message that he got mm -hmm. that said, oh, I'm trending. I mean, you know, you can tell the difference between when someone is joking and someone is actually crossing boundaries and, you know, it's, it's all a joke. Like, why would I even say a CGA diabetes smoke? It's a joke. It's meant to be a joke. Yeah. But I'm not sure he did got that joke. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe he just wants to write it. I don't know what, what he's up to. But yeah. I, I think the, he's getting some mileage from there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's what he tweeted me and said, hey, I'm trending. I'm excited. And I'm like, yo, I'm happy for you, you know? So. Yeah. No, I just said he was trending because people were laughing at him for uh, Mr. Rupp. And he, 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 he equally laughed and said, oh, you guys are laughing at me. Maybe I'm, tr I'm tr yes, I'm trending, but does it even matter? Hmm. Because your catcher, uh, Joshua, when he was doing the video, thanked his, his PR team and said, oh, my PR team has really done well. So it looked like a PR gimmick to all of us. No. Charlie, I think my PR, my PR did a wonderful job, man. I just follow all the tweets online, uh, on, on Twitter. Uh, but you won't make it. I want better person, heavyweight person, you can't beef me up. Papi Kojo. Oh. Why you people, why do you do that thing? Charlie, we, we, share to survive from secondary as a rapper, enter Tema Kasari to survive, come out and hit. You know, you know, you know don't compare Papi Koji, don't do that thing. I just it was on Twitter, I just they laugh. You won't make somebody bad see me a Papi Koji. Oh, somebody for advice, I make you not try. No, 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 no. Make you not try. No, 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 Papi man, yeah. Don't try. It's not pure gimmicks. Maybe he thanked the team because uh, they've been able to uh, contain him to a certain level, okay? Maybe he could have gotten rough, but he's Did decided... Did contain Papi Koju? Uh, yes, and no, and in touch and happening on Twitter and everywhere, okay? He could have used some case words that we wouldn't have favored us. So when he says that, I think he covers all this, not just with Papi Koju. Mm, thank you. <laughs>